it's the same thing that's been happening with this story for the last five years. There's so much stuff out there one way or the other, but there's that nagging doubt in the back of your mind that this might be exactly what they're saying it is. I'd say half the people recognize what it is, that it's, you know, that it's, to them it's a story, it's some creative person online, but they still find it entertaining. I would say about 25% of the people believe it, and they're out buying canned food and guns. It's a very bizarre feeling to think that you actually knew about something because the time traveler told you about it. One theory where you had to, in order to build a time machine, you needed to start with an object with the mass of Jupiter and then stretch it out so it was um, infinitely long and then rotate it at the speed of light. I don't think anybody has any idea uh, or really a good idea of how to look into the future right now except for the little bits and pieces that we see from science. I'm a professor of theoretical physics, and as a consequence, we have to use Einstein's equations to describe the universe. However, Einstein himself realized that when he proposed general relativity, that there was the possibility, there was the possibility that perhaps he could go backwards in time. Now, I as a physicist have to confront the same question that Einstein asked. We do believe that Einstein's equations give us the best description of space and time. However, there's a loophole here. It seems as if, in Einstein's equations, time travel is possible. What is my long-term goal for my time machine? Well, the, the process of building it has really been uh, the important issue for me. I guess my interest in time travel goes back to the first time I saw the film The Time Machine uh, back in 1960. My father was an usher at, the mov at a movie theater, a local movie theater in our town, and he took me to see The Time Machine with Rod Taylor, and it was the first time I had an introduction to the concept of traveling in time. My name is Oliver Williams, and I run a website called johnteeter.com. John Teeter is the name of a person who went on the internet for five months in 2000-2001 claiming to be a time traveler from the year 2036. He spoke about why he was here, who he was, how his time machine worked, and then abruptly stopped posting and claimed to return to where he came from in 2036. My name is Larry Haber. I'm an entertainment attorney here in Orlando, Florida and um, I'm employed, self-employed. I have my own law practice here in Orlando, and I also work for a company here uh, downtown Orlando called Acme Strategy Corporation. I've been a lawyer for about 23 years now, and I've worked in the past at Universal Studios and at Disney, and so I have a background both in the theme park and entertainment side of things, and also a background in corporate and securities law. Well, I wasn't aware of John Teeter before I was hired by a friend of mine who I went to law school with. Um, I graduated law school in 1982 at um, Hofstra University in New York, and just a couple of years ago got a call, hadn't heard from him in a long time, and said, I've got something interesting for you to look at. So I said, sure, what is it? 
He basically said that he represented the family of a time traveler, and he said he couldn't disclose who they were, couldn't tell me anything more about it, but if I was interested, they wanted to get the story out and wanted to do some things with the book and merchandising, etc. And I said, you know, basically, I, I said, this has got to be crazy. There's nothing to this and so on. He convinced me to take it on. And so uh, for the last couple of years, that's what I've been doing. Um, I basically work through him. And I've never met anybody from the family. They send me stuff every once in a while through him. Um, I was told when I was hired not to disclose anything in, or any information, I guess. I can't tell you who it was that, that hired me. Um, but basically, I'm the conduit. Time travel to the future is actually commonplace. Every time we go into a rocket ship, there is something called time dilation. In other words, time actually slows down. Believe it or not, the faster you move, the slower time beats. We've actually measured this with atomic clocks. Our astronauts, when they go into outer space, when they come back, are slightly younger than they would have been if they simply stayed on the Earth. Now, if you could go near the speed of light, you would in fact be suspended in animation. You would actually be frozen in time. So that when you stopped your journey, you would actually be perhaps hundreds of years into the future. When I got interested in building replicas of the time machine from the 1960 movie, uh, it was 1999, and I had decided to build a scale model. It took me probably close to three months to, to complete this, uh, this scale model. And just as I was finishing it, I got connected to the internet. And I go on and I type in time machine. And much to my shock and surprise, I get this site that's about these enthusiasts, all about my age, at, a, at about 50 years old, who have somehow reconnected with this memory of this, this science fiction film from 1960 and had some emotional connection to it and were, were compelled to uh, make these scale models. And uh, it, it, th there were blueprints from MGM, from the uh, original uh, prop that was made back in 1960 for all to see on the internet now. And uh, my jaw dropped when I realized that I had become a member of a club that I didn't even know I belonged to and connected with all these other people who were enthusiastic about, about the same thing. And um, that led to my decision um, to construct a full-scale version of the prop. 